Okay, I am standing in our powerhouse, which is a shed that was given to us. We are so grateful for such things. And you can see behind me our solar array and my little co-star here. And uh, this shed was not originally designed to be a powerhouse because it's a hand-me-down. So I have to make some modifications and I'm gonna show you what those are here in just a moment. So this shed has shelves that are um, installed along the outer walls and those shelves extend all the way. Now I've already taken these ones down and I don't think it's worth my time and energy after getting the switch and the outlet out of these boxes to remove the boxes themselves. So we'll just go right over the top of those. We'll take this wire out. What's nice is that this corner and the reason that I'm going to put our or control panel in this corner is because there's already a place where there's an inlet for power from the outside in this shed. So by putting it in here, it's the corner closest to our solar array, which means less wire, less trenching, more of a straight shot. And handily enough, it's also the corner pretty much closest to the house where we're gonna go in um, into the house, which is kind of right under where that small window is. So I have to clear this wall because the control panel for our solar with the inverter and the controller box and all of that good stuff is on a four by four sheet of plywood. This wall is just over four feet wide, but this, which it was uh, a counter area, is in the way. So I am actually gonna take this whole counter space out. That cabinet moves, so I'll just stick it probably on the other side over here. Should be super easy because it's only a couple pieces of, of wood. Just a minute, Clara. And the reason I'm doing that is because our batteries, and we're getting um, golf cart batteries, are going to sit in two rows on the floor right here. And that puts them close to where they need to be plugged in to the, or wired in rather, to the control board. And I'll show you uh, photos that we took of William and I putting our control board together. William really did most of the work. All right, I have taken out the minimal counter structure. It was a grand total of three boards that I had to remove. I could remove this one, but I'm gonna leave it there because it's not doing any damage. Well, this shed is totally adequate for what we're gonna use it for. Um, <laughs> It does have some uh, idiosyncrasies, but I can come along on the outside, and I think I might actually, and throw some more attachment in there so that we end up with, uh, you know, <laughs> a little more, more structurally sound uh, such and such. So I think I'm gonna do that. We'll see what it looks like on the outside. Ah, yes, so you can see actually that there used to be attachments in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put those back. We love our free power shed. Yes, we do. Um, when the person built it, they used extremely thin plywood for the floor. And we have these batteries that need to be placed along that wall. You can see William mounted our power controller wall, which is pretty awesome. Um, but I need to reinforce this floor because these batteries are exceedingly heavy. So I'm taking some scrap 5 8 plywood that we had left over from building the house and I am laying them across that wall to span two floor joists. Here you can see on the underside of the shed that there are floor joists. They are 16 inches on center which is handy. Um, this one is eight inches from the edge. So what that meant was that I was able to come inside and see where they were on the inside of the building and how wide my um, plywood needed to be in order to span two of them. Now, the other piece of this is that um, you can see the batteries are sitting on a pallet. This particular pallet is the wrong size and shape for what we need, but 
we happen to have another pallet that some of our building supplies were delivered on. So this is pretty much the perfect width to house two rows of batteries. And uh, I am going to cut it to length because it's slightly long and place it on top of my reinforced plywood floor there. And then it should be totally fine to um, distribute the weight of these batteries across there without totally destroying the building. I'm getting ready to cut this pallet to 89 inches. And I just wanna say a word about which end to cut off. So pallet wood is not exactly top of the line. Um, that's fine, I know that, it's okay. But you can maximize your structural integrity here. So on this end, we have a whole bunch of knots. This is the end I'm gonna cut off so I can eliminate those knots from the equation. I've cut my pallet to length. Now, given the size of the battery bank array, um, I could just trim it to that two by four there, but I don't own a board stretcher. And in the event that I need those extra couple inches, I don't want to sacrifice it just cause. So I'm going to take this end apart and these two two by fours that are already nailed together, I'm going to slip into the end there and nail them back on. We really appreciate all of our subscribers. Please consider taking a second to hit that button. The pallet is installed and you can see that I went back in and I filled in some of this gap um, with some scrap two by four and two by six that I had lying around. That'll give these batteries something really solid to rest on. Um, and now the fun part, I get to move all these batteries onto this pallet. They are heavy. They weigh about 50 bucks, they're 50 bucks, 50 pounds a piece. They are not 50 bucks a piece, holy moly. Um, and uh, you have to set them up a certain way. So I have a diagram from Advanced Power, which is where we bought all of our components from. And uh, you can see the solar panels on the trailer there. And Advanced Power um, really did right by us, of course. They've been in business for like 40 years in this area. They helped us put together our own control board, which was nice, saved us a ton on labor. Some of these components are secondhand, but still have tons of life in them. And just like everything else, this is designed to get us started. There's room for expansion. Um, and at some point we will do that, but not now. Right now the goal is to get us up here and have power, which I'm super excited about. After we set the batteries and I do a little more clearing out of our powerhouse, because it's kind of becoming a disaster area, um, William and I are planning to set the panels on the um, ground mount system that we put in. You can see our other videos explaining that. Voila! Our battery bank is in position. Stay tuned for the hookup. It's a good thing I didn't trim that pallet because I definitely took up the entire thing those are the positive caps. Why are you taking them off? Well, what we're doing is we're going to hook these batteries up. And by hook up, we just mean at this point we're going to hook them together in series and parallel. Oh. We're not hooking anything up to our solar panels just yet because we don't have the wire run between here and the panels. Okay. We have two rows of six volt batteries. Each row has eight batteries. The way we're going to hook these up is each row will make 48 volt. And then we'll hook the two together. Now in order to double your voltage, you're going to start at your back. You're going to start at either end. I'm going to start at the back. Voltage or amperage? We're, we're doubling the voltage right now. Okay. And you're going to start with your negative and go to a positive. I know that sounds weird, but that's how it works. Whenever I say 
chocolate. I actually mean, I actually mean peanut butter. Oh, well that's too complicated to remember. We can use that wire too. So are you meaning the wire behind dad there? That is low voltage wire, and we're going to use that in between the powerhouse and the house to hook up our voltmeters specifically so we can yeah, tell how our system's is a, doing. That's a small gauge wire. You, you can't put too big of a load on it. We're also going to need the black marker. Yeah, and the black wire we're going to use. So our system calls for number four. Positive and negative, but we have a whole bunch of number two, and we're going to use number two because it's okay to run bigger wire. You just don't want to run smaller wire. If you run smaller wire, you have to run a lot more of it to get that bigger size. My mom was generous enough to give us this number two from when he she uh, wired up her hydroelectric system. We have a creek here we could pull hydroelectric power from. That's probably a future project to consider once we get up, up and running here with the solar. Right now, William is tightening down all the nuts on the cables, connecting the positives and negatives of each battery in series. We have not connected them in parallel yet. I've connected one. Oh. I connected the back one. Okay, and that's so positive to positive. This is positive to positive. This is negative to positive, negative, positive. Negative, positive, negative, positive, so on and so forth. Always connect your negative last. Always unconnect the negative first. Hmm. With tightening these, you don't need to use any power tools, just some wrenches. In my case, I'm just using the ratchet. Ooh, I like these cover shapes. Just snug them up. Don't wrench them down too tight because you don't want to strip it because it's lead. We checked the voltage of each series. Each um, bank. Of each bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, our multimeter was not quite long enough with its leads, so we had to use a jumper, which is just this extra piece of solar panel cable. Yeah, this is just a thick strand copper wire, which worked perfect. And we needed too many hands, so no hands will hold the camera to show you how we did it, unfortunately. Um, but basically, you have to touch the negative on one battery to the positive on the other battery. And that gave us 48 volts times two. Now this one is positive to positive. This one is negative to negative. And that will give us a bunch of amperage.